shielding and de-shielding. We know that the frequency of the NMR signal is going to depend on the strength of the magnetic field that is experienced by the nucleus. Now in a compound, if all the protons are going to experience the same amount of magnetic field, then all we will be getting in the NMR spectrum is one peak which is going to correspond for all the protons present in the compound. This is not going to give us any information about the structure of the compound. But the key thing here in NMR is not all the protons are going to experience the same amount of magnetic field. There are some protons which experience a greater magnetic field and some others experience only a smaller magnetic field. This is because of the electrons surrounding the nucleus. Some protons are shielded and some others are de-shielded. Protons which are said to be in the electron rich environment are shielded from the applied magnetic field and therefore they only take very low amount of energy for it to come to resonance. And protons which are in the electron poor environment are said to be de-shielded and they are going to take more energy for it to come to resonance with the radio frequency radiation. Let's use some pictures to understand shielding and de-shielding. Let's take two different nuclei, HA and HB, and both of them are present in two different chemical environments. Here is HA. HA doesn't have any electrons around it, whereas HB has got a bunch of electrons around it. Therefore, let's say that HA is an electron poor environment, and then HB is an electron rich environment. The magnetic moments of each of these nuclei is oriented in this direction. Let's say that you're going to apply an external magnetic field, which is represented by B0. Basically, you're going to take the sample and then put it inside the NMR machine. And the magnet inside the NMR machine is going to cause the magnetic moment of this nuclei to be aligned with the field. Okay. Now, in the case of HB, since you have a bunch of electrons around it, these electrons are going to shield the nucleus from experiencing the applied magnetic field. This effect where the electrons shield the nucleus from experiencing the magnetic field is also called as diamagnetic shielding as the circulating electrons can generate a diamagnetic ring current. Because of this diamagnetic shielding, the magnetic moment of this nucleus may not get aligned with the field. Now, when you're going to apply energy of RF frequency, what is going to happen is the nucleus is going to take the energy and then it's going to get aligned against the field. Now, in the case of HA, it needed to take 180 degree turn for it to get aligned against the field. This process where the nucleus need to flip to get itself aligned against the field is called as flipping. The nucleus from the alpha spin state is going to get promoted to the beta spin state. So this one right here is the alpha spin state and this is the beta spin state. Here it needed to take 180 degree turn. But in the case of HB, since the magnetic moment of the uh, nucleus is not aligned with the field to begin with, it doesn't have to take a 180 degree turn. Instead, it only needs to take a very slight turn. Okay, So here it's definitely going to be lesser than 180 degree. Now, when you're going to compare the energies that is required by both of these nuclei, HA and HB, for it to come into resonance or for it to get aligned against the field, you can definitely say that the HA is going to take more energy because it needed to make a 180 degree flip. But in the case of HB, it only need to make a slight turn because of which the energy is going to be less. The energy required is going to be less. So here, it will take more energy and here it will be less energy. More energy is associated with high frequency and less energy is associated with low frequency. So protons which are in the electron poor environments are said to be de-shielded, de-shielded from the applied magnetic field and they are going to take more energy for it to come into resonance, for it to get their magnetic moments aligned against the field. Whereas protons, which are in the electron rich environment, are said to be shielded from the applied magnetic field and therefore they are going to take only very less amount of energy for it to come into resonance or for it to get aligned against the field. When you want to draw the NMR spectrum, which contains the NMR signals for these two protons, this hydrogen, Hb, is going to uh, appear in the upfield region. Since it's going to take lower energy, Whereas this hydrogen is going to appear in the downfield region because it's going to take more energy for it to come into resonance with the RF frequency. So in the NMR spectrum, this is how it's going to look like. 
So the peak in the upfield region. So this region right here is the upfield region. And this is going to be relatively downfield. So you will be seeing two peaks for these two hydrogens. Okay. For which this is going to be, this is going to correspond for HB. And this one right here is going to correspond for HA. This process where the electrons are shielding the nucleus from experiencing the applied magnetic field is called as diamagnetic shielding. Let's now take a real example to understand shielding and deshielding and see how the chemical shift of the protons is going to be affected by the surrounding electrons. Let's take nitropropane as our example. So in nitropropane, we do have two methylene groups. This methylene group is closer to the nitro group, and this is two steps away from the nitro group. Now, what kind of group is the nitro group? Nitro group is an electron withdrawing group, which is going to pull the electrons towards itself. Now, because it is pulling the electrons towards itself, these hydrogens right here are said to be deshielded. Whereas these hydrogens right here that are highlighted in green are said to be shielded because they are going to have some electrons around it. Or in other words, the effect of the nitro group is going to be slightly reduced because it's two steps away from the uh, nitro group. So these are said to be comparatively shielded. Since these two protons are in two different chemical environments, they are going to experience different amounts of magnetic field. Now, the actual magnetic field that is experienced by the nucleus can be calculated using this formula. Okay. B effective equals B applied minus B local. This is going to be the effective magnetic field that is experienced by the nucleus, which is the actual magnetic field that is experienced by the nucleus. B applied is the external magnetic field that you apply. And then B local is the magnetic field that is created by the electrons surrounding the nucleus. Let's now take case one. We are going to focus on these two hydrogens right here. Now we can assume that these hydrogens do not have many electrons around it because it is closer to the nitro group, electron withdrawing nitro group. Let's say that this is the magnetic moment of the nucleus. And when you apply an external magnetic field, it is going to get aligned with the field. Now when you send an RF radiation, what's going to happen is this is going to make a 180 degree flip to get its magnetic moment aligned against the field. Now let's find out what is the actual magnetic field that is experienced by this nucleus. Since it doesn't have any electrons around it, the B local is almost going to be equivalent to zero. Now because of which the actual magnetic field that is experienced by the nucleus is going to be the applied magnetic field, the whole of the applied magnetic field. Here B effective is going to be a larger number in relation to what we are going to talk in the next case. In the next case, we are going to focus on these two hydrogens right here. Because it is two steps away from the nitro group, we can expect it to have some electrons around it, which is represented by this electron, by this green shape. Again, here is the magnetic moment of this nucleus. And when you apply an external magnetic field, this nucleus may not get aligned with the field. And when you apply uh, RF radiation, it only needs to take a little amount of energy for it to get aligned against the field. Here, the B local is not going to be zero since you have some electrons around it, right? So this is going to be a non-zero number because of which the B effective is going to be smaller since you're going to subtract the B local from the B applied. When you compare the chemical shift values for these two hydrogens right here, these two different types of hydrogens right here, these hydrogens are going to come around 4.37 ppm. Whereas these hydrogens right here are going to come around 2.07 ppm. Since the deshielded protons are going to experience a greater amount of the magnetic field, they are going to take more energy for it to come into resonance with the RF radiation. And the chemical shift values for this is going to be higher. Whereas the shielded protons are going to experience a smaller magnetic field and therefore it only takes a lower amount of energy for it to come into resonance. And therefore it is going to show a signal with a smaller chemical shift of 2.07 ppm. On the whole, what we can say is the deshielded protons are going to come in the downfield region, whereas the shielded protons are going to come in the upfield region of the NMR spectrum.